Chapter Four of And Thus He Came by Cyrus Townsend Brady. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Four The Workman. Is not this the carpenter? In the mean, squalid room back of the saloon, half a score of men were assembled. They were all young in years, in other things not youthful. Some of them lounged against the wall, some sat at tables. All were drinking. The air was foul with smoke and reeked with the odor of vile liquor. "'We've got two jobs on hand tonight," said the leader of the gang. "'There's a crib to be cracked and a guy to be croaked. Red, you and Gypsy and the gunny will crack the crib. It's dead easy, only an old man and his wife. The servants are out, except one, and he's fixed. I'll give you the layout presently. The other job's harder. Kid, I'll put you in charge, and as it's got to be done early tonight, I'll give you the orders now. He'll be at the Montmorency at ten o'clock. Someone will call him out to the street. Who? Never mind who. You'll be there in the car. Whose car? Never mind whose. Why are you asking so many questions? It'll take you and the four to the Montmorency at ten o'clock. When he comes out, every one of you let go, the whole bunch, understand? If they don't find five bullets in him, there'll be trouble tomorrow. What do we get out of it? A hundred apiece for you and a hundred and fifty for me for engineering the job. Christmas money, you get me? Well, of course, how'll we know who we've got to shoot? I'll be there myself on the sidewalk. I'll point him out to you. The police? They're fixed. Well, easy enough, said the kid, the youngest of the gang. Well, you guys, said the leader, pointing out four of the men, will go with the kid. The car will be at the door in half an hour. Now, give me my orders, said Red. The gang leader scribbled something on a bit of paper. You go to that number with these two guys between midnight and two in the morning. You'll find a back window open. Here's the combination of the safe. The silver will be in that jewels in a wall cabinet upstairs it'll be unlocked and if they make any noise croak em of course but don't make no noise doing it better use a blackjack we're not sure about the cop on that beat i understand well get your gats and make ready before we go the drinks will be on me fill up men he added first pouring himself a liberal glassful and here's to bringing it off easy with deep relish the toast was drunk by all save Red and the Kid. Red set his glass down on the table, and the Kid dropped his to the floor. "'There's somebody else in the room,' whispered Red. "'Yes, yonder, by the door,' said the Kid. "'You can just see him.' "'Don't be a fool,' said the gang leader. "'There's nobody here but us.' "'He's wearing strange clothes,' said Red. "'He looks like a carpenter by his kit of tools said the kid here pull yourselves together men said the gang leader you're dippy there's nobody there where's your nerve but red made no move to obey he thrust his glass from him and rose and leaned over the table staring the other men shrank back glancing at the two figures for the kid had also dashed the proffered glass aside I see him, he said. He's looking at me. He's looking through me. In his excitement, he took a step forward, and the table went over with a crash. The two men passed their hands over their eyes in bewilderment. Why, there ain't nobody here, said the kid. But I seen him, I tell you, persisted Red, and so did I. "'Well, he's gone, whoever he was, according to your own showin', said the gang-leader contemptuously. "'Now brace up. Take your liquor. Get a move on use.' "'Not me,' exclaimed Red suddenly. "'Nor me,' said the kid. "'What do you mean? I won't do it. Neither will I.' Both men moved to the door. The gang-leader sprang to intercept them, his arms upraised, his hands clenched. "'Let me pass,' said Red. Are you going to give us away? No, answered Red, but you don't rob no house and you don't kill no man tonight. 
you all know what that means cried the leader here you men grab em but the rest of the gang hung back maybe they did see something said one you cowardly dogs cried the leader we won't mention no names to nobody said the kid but you can't pull them jobs off we'll just warn em you swore you'd be true to the gang that you'd obey orders and follow directions we won't give you away but i'm going to quit the gang and go to work said red me too said the kid work hell exclaimed the gang leader but they shoved him out of the way and went out of the door end of chapter four